Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2010 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Now, before we get into the question, a bit of a disclaimer. The topic for this question is non-profit organizations, also known as clubs. Now, this is not on the current iteration of the CSEC POA syllabus, so it is technically irrelevant to people who are currently doing CSEC POA. However, I know that there are other students who follow syllabuses other than CSEC POA who watch my videos, and I'm making this video for them. And of course, there's always the possibility that CXC will bring back on the syllabus, not this particular piece of non-profit organizations. So this video may become relevant at some point in time in the future, right? The only element of this particular the type of non-profit organization that is still relevant is the receipts and payments account and if you want to check that video out I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below so you can check that out so you can see what is currently relevant for CSEC PUA. Okay and with all that said let's get into the question. Okay so they're telling us that the community of Swain's Spring operates a chess club for its senior citizens. The following is, is the receipts and payments account for the year ended August 31st or 9th. So they've given us a receipts and payments account here. This is basically a glorified cash book or a cash account. The debit side is where money comes in, hence it's called the receipt side, we're receiving money. And the credit side is where money goes out, payments, when we make payments or pay for anything. So you have a regular opening balance. So subscriptions, that's like a membership fees, that's the major source of revenue for clubs. And they also have to have fundraisers and get donations, right? So tea party would be a fundraiser. Gifts is like donations and sale of refreshments right so they'll probably have on their premises some kind of cafeteria or something and they'll sell refreshments there now on the payment side they have rent of community center maybe for the tea party who knows purchase of refreshments expenses of tea party general expenses and bank balance. so you have a closing bank balance all right now they've also provided us with some additional information so we have the opening balances on september 1st 08 closing balances august 31st 09 so we have some opening and closing stock balances there. Subscriptions due and in advance. So accrued and prepaid revenue items. Now there's no closing balance for the prepaid one. All right, so we have to watch out for that. Rent paid in advance. So no opening balance, but closing. So there's a prepaid rent at end. Chess equipment at cost 8,000, 8,000. Okay, and one little note here. Chess equipment is to be depreciated at the rate of 10% per annum. The first thing they want us to do is to show a statement showing the accumulated fund for September 1st or 8th. So you might be wondering, well, what in the world is accumulated fund? That is what these nonprofit organizations call their capital. And we know capital is simply assets minus liabilities. So we're going to head up Swain Springs Chess Club accumulated fund as at September 1st or 8th. Now, some people would, would call this statement a statement of affairs, which would be perfectly fine. I'm just giving the question what they asked for and how they asked for it as a cumulative fund, as opposed to statement of affairs. But again, there wouldn't be much of a difference, if any at all, except in name. So let's start off with the assets. So we're going to go back to the information, the opening information only, right? September 1st or 8th. So we have stock of refreshments, subscriptions due. That's a crude revenue, which is an asset. Subs in advance, that's a liability. Prepaid revenue is a liability. Rent paid in advance would have been an asset, but there's none at the start. And chess equipment, of course. Now, you may be thinking, well, right, okay, easy thing. We only have four items to put. Mm -mm. This is what they love to do. So they love to give us this table down here with these opening balances and whatnot. But don't forget, they also gave us the receipts and payments account. And the receipts and payments account is the bank account. And don't forget, we have an opening bank balance of 3000 and that is how they used to catch many, many students by separating the information and making you think, oh, well, the only relevant information is down here in our list of balances. So that's something that's, that's a fun piece of, uh, of um, work you guys are missing out on. Anyhow, so let's start populating the assets. So we have the bank balance of 3000. We have the subscriptions due. We have the stock of refreshments. And we have the chess equipment. Again, no particular order. You could choose to put it in order of, of um, what you call it. Permanence, I feel like I put this in order of liquidity here. So when we add up everything here, we're going to get a total of 11720 There was one liability, the subs in advance of 100 And we're going to simply subtract that from the total assets to give us a cumulated fund or non-profit capital of 11620 Okay, let's check out part B. Part B is asking us to do a subscriptions account for four marks, right? Now, a subscriptions account is a revenue account. 
And again, I didn't do any tutorials on nonprofit organizations of this type because again, it's not on the current iteration of the CSEC PUA syllabus. But it is a T account, it's a revenue account. If you want to see my video on how to do revenue accounts, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So you can check that out and come back or just, just stay along for the video and I'll tell you what to do, okay? So subscriptions account, regular looking T account. Okay, so what do we have? We have subscriptions due or accrued, which is accrued revenue, which is a current asset. We have a balance at start and a balance at end. If it's classified as an asset, right? That means it's going to have a debit balance. So we're going to put the 220 on the debit side of here. And if you want, you could also put the closing balance in one time, right? Now let's actually save that for a bit later. We'll come back to that, okay? Now, do we have any other opening balance? Yes, we also have the subs in advance or prepaid revenue. Prepaid revenue is a liability and liabilities have credit balances at start. So we're gonna put that on that side. Now, if we go up to the receipts and payments account on the debit side, we are going to see subscription, 6,000. So that's the amount of subscriptions received. And if it's on the debit side here, guess what? It's going to be on the credit side in the subscriptions account. Okay, now we're gonna to come to that same closing balance, which we're gonna put again, down here. So it's going to be brought down on the debit side. But prior to being brought down on the debit side, you have to first be carried down from the credit side. Now there was no closing balance that was prepaid, so we don't have a matching figure here or here. What we are missing, however, is the subscriptions earned or the income and expenditure figure. Like how we have an income statement figure, their version of an income statement is called an income and expenditure account, which we'll see below or a bit later on in this video. Now that will go on the debit side. Now how do we find that balance? We have to balance off the account as it stands. So both sides have to end up with a total of 6,540, right? You add up the total figures on this side. And again, remember both sides of a T account are supposed to be equal. But right now we only have 220 on this side. So how do we get to 6,540? Well, you'll simply subtract 6,540 minus 220. And that's going to give us the income and expenditure figure of 6,320 or subscriptions earned. All right. So again, this topic is not on the current iteration of the CSEC PUA syllabus. So if you're looking at it and you're like, do I have to know how to do that? The answer is no. If, however, you are doing a syllabus other than CSEC PUA and you have to know this, then yeah, if you have any questions, please ask them below. Okay, let's take a look at part C. So they're asking us to do a statement showing the profit or loss made on refreshment. So basically, this is going to be like a trading account or a mini income statement. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so be sure to head it up. Swain Springs Chess Club, Refreshment Bar, Profit or Loss Statement to the year ended August 31st, 2009. So the first thing we're gonna put in is like our sales figure. So where do we find that? Well, if we go up to the receipts and payments account, you're gonna see sale of refreshments, 2,650. So we're gonna put that in there and we're gonna put less cost of goods sold or less cost of sales. How do we do that? Usual way. Now, if you don't know how to do a trading account, I'm gonna put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out. Right? If you know how to do it, we're going to start with the opening stock of refreshments, which they give us here as $500. So we're going to put that in. And on the credit side of the receipts and payments account, we're going to find purchases of refreshments, $1,900. Now, you guys are kind of lucky because normally what they would do is they would give you creditors for bar purchases or creditors for refreshments. So you'd have to do up a creditors control account to find the purchases figure to then put inside of here. So they, they spared you this time. So let's add the opening stock on the purchases to get 2400 cost of goods available for sale or cost of refreshments available for sale. And the closing stock of refreshments is $700 as seen in this table here. So we are going to subtract that from the cost of goods available to give us 1700 the cost of goods sold. And we're going to subtract that figure from the sale of refreshments figure to get the profit on refreshments. Okay, there's one more part of this question, part D, the income and expenditure account. Let's take a look. Right, so like I said, that's exactly what they're asking you to do, an income and expenditure account for the year ended August 31st, 2009. This is basically an income statement without the trading section. That's why they kind of had us do it in the previous part of the question. So the income section will have all of the revenues for income, most of which you can find on the credit, the debit side, sorry, of the receipts and payments account. The payment, the expenditure will be on the payment side. But of course, you're going to have a little modifications to make, which we probably made already. And if not, I'll show you how to do it very quickly. So don't forget to head up Swain Springs Chess Club Income and Expenditure Account for the year ended 31st August 2009. Lovely. First thing we're going to put in is the subscriptions figure. Now, not this figure of 6,000 across here. We are going to put the figure that was subscriptions earned that we found in the subscriptions account, right? 
of 6,320. The next item we're going to put is the profit and refreshments, which we found in the previous positive question of 950. And now we're going to go up to the debit side of the receipts and payments account. And we're going to see Tea Party and gifts. Now, Tea Party had income of 5,300, but on the credit side, you're seeing expenses of Tea Party 2,000. So we are going to have to net that off. What I mean by that is you're going to take the 5,003 and minus the 2,000. The last item is the gifts, which is given to us and requires no adjustments. And we're going to total up an, ex an income figure, sorry. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the expenditure section now. So if we go up to the credit side of the receipts and payments account, you're going to see a few items well here. We have rent of community center, purchase of refreshments. Now that was already dealt with in the refreshment trading account. And we have kind of combined it in the profit figure. So we, we've dealt with that already. The expenses of Tea Party, we actually dealt with that in the in the income section by netting it off with the Tea Party receipts and general expenses. Now, for the rent of community center, don't forget to always check out your additional information. There is a prepaid balance there of $200, right? And we're seeing chess equipment at cost and we are told that that needs to be depreciated. So you see how you have to read your question carefully and be mindful of all of the information that could come to be useful in the statements you're doing. So you will really require to be mindful of what you were looking at and to keep a lot of things in your brain. Okay, so let's deal with the, the rent first. The community center rent was 2,400, but we had a prepaid figure of 200. We subtract prepayments at end in order to find the amount incurred. The general expenses were simply 1,700, and for the depreciation of the chest equipment, it was 10% of 8,000, which was 800. Adding all those together gives us 4,700, which when subtracted from the total income of 11,070, gives us a surplus of income over expenditure of 6,370, right? This is what their version or their wording for what net profit is, right? Surplus of income over expenditure. If they had made a loss, it would have been deficit of expenditure over income. Oh, sorry, excess of expenditure over income. Okay, and that's actually it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2010 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.